The January 6th committee is moving to primetime this coming Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern. The committee plans to present unseen documents and provide new witness testimony about the Capitol insurrection. The committee has interviewed dozens of witnesses behind closed doors so far, including the former attorney general, William Barr, who sources say met with House investigators for more than two hours this past week. For more on what to expect from the hearings, we're joined by Hugo Lowell, congressional reporter for The Guardian, who has been at the forefront of the reporting on the committee's work. It's good to have you with us. And the committee this past week, they put out a statement, and it said that they will, quote, present previously unseen material. Give us a sense of what that might be. Yeah, that's exactly right. They want to show all of the investigative materials that they have got from people like Mark Meadows, Trump's former chief of staff, um, testimony from people connected to the militia groups, and testimony from people who actually shot the documentary um, footage and accompanied uh, the various actors through from Election Day all the way through to January 6th. And so none of this has been seen by anyone before other than the investigators on the January 6th committee. And so for the first time, they're going to present this. And at the first hearing on June 9th, the idea is to present a roadmap of criminality. And that's how it's been described to me by a source on the committee. And then they're going to dive straight into the new material prime time at 8 p.m. Democratic Congressman Jamie Raskin, who is a committee member, he said a couple of months ago now uh, that this will blow the roof off of the House, as, as that's the phrase that he used. Is that the sense that you get? It certainly sounds that way. I mean. We've only seen a snippet of what the evidence is, and we've seen it in court filings. And every time they have a court filing, and whether it's transcripts from people like Cassidy Hutchinson, who was an aide to Mark Meadows and worked in the office, or whether it's um, exhibits or emails that they have pulled uh, from people like John Eastman, who wrote the infamous memo about having Pence throw the election, every single time we've had a new court filing and we've seen that evidence, it is a huge deal. Mm. And so if that's just what they're making public, um, the slivers that they're making public there, the expectation is when they release all of it in one go in these hearings, it will be a really big deal. What's the committee's goal? I mean, so many people's views about what happened on that day are pretty hardened. Is the committee trying to change people's minds, or are they really introducing their work product so that it exists in the public record to prevent this from ever happening again? If you ask the committee, they'll say it's a legislative purpose, right? That's what they have to say. But it's abundantly clear from the direction they've been heading in that their aim is to show potential criminality by the former president and people in his inner circle. And they want to present the facts and the underlying basis for that conclusion to the American public. And the hope is to show, look, this is what our council believes, and you should believe this too. And here's the reasons why. I want to ask you about the indictment of uh, former Trump aide Peter Navarro. Uh, there had been a frustration among the committee members that the DOJ wasn't moving quickly enough to enforce their subpoenas. That has now changed, given the, the, this development with Navarro. But still, the committee will hold these hearings without having the information that they have subpoenaed from the House Minority Leader, Kevin McCarthy, and the other Republicans uh, that they've sought information from. How will that affect their ability to connect this story, to sort of stitch together this tapestry of events? I don't think it affects it that much at all, because the primary evidence here is photos, text messages, emails. And they already have that, not from the Republican members of Congress side, but from the recipients or the people who are sending them the text messages. So they don't really need these members of Congress to turn over their communications. Some members of this committee have hyped these public hearings as being a Watergate-style moment. And yet, these hearings are happening in the dead of the summer, in June, only really across two weeks in June. Most of these hearings will be held during the day. Will they be able to break through, do you think? The idea, from what I understand, is that the two primetime hearings that bookend the entire two weeks are going to be the big revelations that we haven't seen before, evidence of criminality, potential evidence of conspiracy. So that's the aim here. As to whether they break through, the committee's starting to think that their job here is starting to be done. It's already, it's already wrapping up. The real meat on this is with the DOJ. They're going to send all of their evidence to the Justice Department. And at the end of the day, what really cuts through to people is when people start getting indicted. Hugo Lowell, appreciate you uh, sharing your brilliant reporting with us. Thanks for coming in. Thanks.